In any case, the obesity epidemic is not showing that we need more general calories. Animals take excess grain calories and turn them into a high quality, efficient source of protein. No, they don't. Animals are not nitrogen fixers. They don't just make protein. They consume protein and then incorporate that protein into their tissues. This is this is basic biology. So there's a couple issues that I have with what Unnatural Vegan said in her video. Now her video was pretty good, I have to admit. Like she actually went into detail and dissected studies and showed differences between studies and I appreciate that. I just wanted to give you a little biology lesson here, Unnatural Vegan. In this paper I found about the cow and the digestion system of the cow, it says rumen microbes are the major source of protein in the cow's diet. Can I repeat that? The major source of protein. Microbes are continually flushed from the rumen through the omasum, omasum? to the abomasum where they are killed and digested by the cow. It seems as though cows just eat grass or eat grains or whatever and that protein goes into their bodies and makes up their tissue but that's not actually the case cows are actually this amazing creature and that's why ruminants are just so great in terms of um, a source of protein because uh, they can take a food like grass which actually goes to feed the bacteria in their stomachs and then that bacteria actually becomes their food cows are actually consumers of bacteria so that's kind of crazy so they are actually making protein out of nothing, really. The protein in the grass doesn't actually have enough protein to fatten up a cow. That's why I think a lot of people are advocating for ruminants to be more eaten in terms of animal protein than other animals. They're just so much more efficient. He clearly didn't read the paper he referenced. The argument being made is that they're taking unusable protein from things humans can't eat and turning them into meat. But even that isn't really true if you read the whole paper. So there's no question that globally animal agriculture is not a net source of protein. And it's really funny how the authors bend over backwards trying to avoid acknowledging this in their paper. They talk about meat being a net positive protein contribution producing four megatons per year. Oh wait, what's that last part? When adding soybean cakes, they represent a deficit of 11 megatons of protein per year? So if we count soybeans, animals are a protein sink, 11 megaton deficit per year, according to the study he references. Read your sources, my dude, it's not that hard. And if it is that hard, maybe stop making these videos. Again, that's why we're talking ruminants and not chickens and pigs because ruminants just make much more sense. And that's why compared to adding soybean cakes, which is, I guess, typically what a lot of animals are fed in the current systems right now, soybean cakes, grain, etc., that's going to create the deficit. Not so much keeping the systems that we have, but changing the systems that we have to be more beneficial to the environment, right? Another fun little fact I gathered from actually reading. Even going by their conservative standards, 43% of land that is growing food for these animals could grow food for humans, which means a total plus opportunity deficit of 83.8 megatons of protein. Animal agriculture is just an enormous protein loss and incredibly inefficient. Eating animals when you have other options is just a really stupid way to eat. Okay, so here they're talking about global feed. And I think that's the issue with a lot of these vegan critiques is what what I learned or will as she calls them, he's looking at cows just because cows and ruminants are more efficient than monogastrics like chickens and pigs and humans for that matter. So to look at global feed, that doesn't really make sense. How much of that global feed is going to cows. And again, 
as of these numbers, it's about 14% of the cow's feed is going towards the cow and you don't even really need those edible by human grains to go to a cow. You can grass finish a cow. It's kind of irrelevant in a sense. It doesn't matter how much land we allow to revert to nature or whatever if we still have plenty of protein for humans. Despite taking up huge amounts of space, marginal grazing lands don't actually end up producing very much. Globally, it's about 27%. Can we grow enough protein to replace it? Well, the other study's numbers suggested, yeah, three times as much, in fact, despite not wanting to admit it. Double checking with these numbers and extrapolating from what we currently grow for humans, which is conservative, right? Because it's not protein focused in the way that like meat replacement crops would be. We end up with 55% of grazing left to rewild. Using those crop and protein numbers, extrapolating current crop ratios to the new arable land where we once got 27% of global protein from animal products, we now get 60% from plants, more than double. Enough global protein to feed over 9 billion people based on current consumption. This is where I want to talk a bit more about these numbers of how much protein we could supply the world with. Now, the reason this is problematic is because, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think these studies are taking into account the digestibility of plant protein compared to the digestibility of animal protein. Animal protein generally is much more digestible. I, I keep bringing up the dias. Most plant protein on the bottom here, peas, rice, barley, wheat, almonds, corn, kind of half of what uh, casein is, right? Actually, whole milk powder is 143% on the dias. Beef is 111 whole milk 114, an egg is 113, chicken breast is 108. And then soy is not bad, okay? It's almost one, but it's still not as good as whole milk or an egg. And then if you go down to the bottom, this is mostly what people are eating. Like let's include chickpeas, peas, rice, barley. Like those are the things that vegans are eating. You're not just going to eat soy, right? And so if you go down the dias, these are like way less digestible. So if you're getting 50 grams of protein from a number of plant sources, I would say you almost have to half that number just because they're less digestible. And let's just use half as just an example. And this is where I want to talk about what's called the acceptable macronutrient distribution range or AMDR. And this is defined as a range of intakes for a particular energy source that is associated with reduced risk of chronic diseases while providing adequate intakes of essential nutrients. So this is not the RDA, this is different. This is from this paper here, Exercise and the Institute of Medicine, Recommendation for Nutrition. The acceptable macronutrient distribution range for protein is between 10 and 35% of energy. I did for a 2000 calorie diet or a 2600 calorie diet, okay? That would mean 200 to 700 calories are gonna be coming from protein for the 2000 and 260 to 910 calories from protein. That's between 10 and 35%, which amounts to, cause a gram of protein has four calories. A 200 calorie diet, you're gonna need 50 to 175 grams of protein a day. And if you look at the RDA currently, it is 45 grams of protein for that same person. And a 2600 calorie diet, the RDA would be 54 grams, but they actually need, according to this measurement, 65 to 228 grams of protein. That is a lot more protein. And that is a very hard number to get on a vegan diet, unless you're using protein powders, lots of meat substitutes, which is what she's suggesting. But those are really big numbers, like 228 grams of protein. And then to fit that all in your belly, with, I don't know, lentils or rice or even just a balanced diet. If you're relying on these current numbers to give you these numbers of protein that we could potentially make with the land that cows are on, basically you're saying that like 
If anyone eats over what they currently are eating, then other people can't eat protein. Like we're going to have a protein shortage in that case, because again, taking into account the dias, right? If you have supplied double the amount of protein humans are gonna need, you've only supplied enough, just enough. Now I think she says triple the amount, but let's say you take into account the dias, but then if you look at these numbers for the acceptable macronutrient distribution range, this number 45 is nowhere near 175 that you may need if you're active and have other or maybe pregnant or going through, you know, a medical issue where you need more protein, that's not going to supply enough protein for people. We're going to need more land than that, much more land than that. And why not use cows on the land that is unusable by agriculture? That's what I just don't, don't understand. Like we'd rather plant it with trees. Why not use cows who can regenerate the soil? And that's another important part is soil regeneration with agriculture. You're not gonna regenerate the soil. And how are you gonna fertilize your land to grow plants, right? Fertilizer is mostly made with cow poop. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into it. Thank you for listening. Give me a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in another video.